Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Mary's in our celebration of the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join together as one family in singing our gathering song, Lord of All Hopefulness. reading 
from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O oh Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king, to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Sisters, 
We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. In the parables, Jesus uses the imagery that people in his day and age would understand. So we hear a lot of imagery about farming and fishing. And so tonight we hear one of those images, the parable of the dragnet, this particular passage is called. And it teaches us, I think, a crucial lesson about the church. It is in the church, but not of the world. And so we look at that in our life and how we live it out. The net symbolizes the church. And the fish are the members of that church, you and me. And the water symbolizes the world of human history, in which the church exists, and with which the church interacts. And at the end of history, there will be a judgment. Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead, as we pray every week in our creed. And at that judgment, some of the fish in the net will be saved, but others will be thrown back into the fiery furnace, where there will be waving and grinding of teeth. But until the judgment day, the net remains fully immersed in that water. So now picture this huge dragnet as it's suspended in the water. It's separate from the water, the world, but it is affected by everything that happens to the water. The currents, a storm, a wave, the net moves in response to all those influences but maintains its integrity even so. And that's what the church is like. It is affected by the cultural trends around us. 
and yet it is never weakened or broken by them. It is flexible enough to adjust to the ebb and the flow of history, while always maintaining its own shape and its strength, keeping its fish safe, if you will, inside of that sturdy net. The church is meant to be active in the world, to be present in the world, spreading the influence of Jesus in the world and saving the world. And if that's how the church is supposed to be, that's also how we, members of the church, are supposed to be. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. And St. Paul understood this. He understood the firm but gentle action of God in our lives. And he says that it's like the dependable but flexible action of a net in the water in some fashion. And this is the point of his famous lines that we hear in today's second reading. He says that God foreknew, predestined, called, justified, then glorified all of those who are his children in Christ Jesus. This isn't a mathematical formula. It's a description of a lived experience of every Christian. As we grow in our friendship with God, as we become more spiritually mature, we realize more and more how closely and lovingly and powerfully God has been watching over us and guiding us all the time. It's only the youngest children, the babies, that aren't aware of the loving presence of their parents, and so they start crying when they need something. But as they grow older, they don't cry out, and they don't do that. They just say, here's what I need. And likewise, I think the more we grow in our faith, the more we grow confident in God and in our love of God, then we find that He is provident. He takes care of us. I was reading a story about St. John Bosco. He asked, one day he was asked for money by a beggar who stopped him on the street. And the saint said, well, I don't have any money. I'm just, I, and the beggar said, well, I need a shirt. So he took his shirt off and gave it to him. And the story goes, he says, the beggar said, well, what about you? And he said, St. John Bosco said, don't worry about me. Today, God takes care of you. Tomorrow, God will take care of me. I think the waves and the currents of the world toss us around. They just swirl about around the net, but the net holds fast. Everything that goes on around us, we're safe with God holding on to us. As St. Paul said so beautifully, we know that all things work for the good of those who love God. Jesus wants to help us to experience life as he meant it to be lived, but we don't give him the chance. And sometimes, instead of getting, letting him guide our lives by swimming along with in the safety net of the church's teaching, we let ourselves sink to the bottom of the sea. And like those crustaceans that prowl the floor of the ocean and cling with all their strength to the rocks, we sometimes cling to those pleasures of this world, this passing world. But then that net can't reach us, and we won't be brought into the shore of everlasting life. And the psalmist says today, truly I love your commands more than the finest gold. If we hang on too tightly to the gold and the glitter of this world, it will weigh us down. But if we cling to God's will, to the sure and strong net of the church's teaching, God will see us safely home. The farmer in the parable sold all he owned so he could buy that field with the treasure. The merchant sold all that he owned so that he could buy the pearl of great price. They weren't afraid of giving up some good things in order to gain one great thing. Is there something we need to give up? Is there some unhealthy relationship or some hidden habit of self-indulgence or some unrepented or unconfessed sin, some festering grudge, some secret sorrow or some self-centered ambition that is weighing us down? Today, Jesus is inviting us to let that go, to let it sink to the bottom of the ocean so that the net of God's love is free to lift us up with him out to the bright, warm shores of a deeper friendship with Jesus. We pray for that grace tonight. God bless you.
Bring all things for many, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess for the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present to our loving Father our prayers and petitions. Eager to share its lasting treasure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wise and brave public servants, working patiently for peace in a violent world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for all who work in difficult, unjust conditions, seeking fair pay and a safe environment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who care for the sick and the dying, Showing the Lord's love in their daily actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and the consecrated life, and for our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Vivica Kohler, Alice Everett, and the people of the parish, for whom this weekend's masses are offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the quiet of our hearts and minds, and for those who have no one to pray for them. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving, merciful Father, we place before you these petitions. We ask you now to hear them and to grant them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the works of the sacrifice of the remains, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all of this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life, Lead us to eternal gladness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Be right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of a virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. From a distance, let us offer each other the sign of peace.
sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son, grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 